Hello, this is George Edmondson from MotionVFX.com. Today we're looking at M movements. And uh, Nick, why don't you back the camera up a little bit? Go ahead and load it onto our camera robot. Cool, all right, so now check this out. How sick was that? Well, actually, uh, why don't we reveal... Nick's not even here! <laughs> M movements, it's pretty awesome. You can get some really cool movements with a static shot like this, for example. I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. On to the tutorial. Once you have downloaded M Movements via M Installer, it can be located in your titles. If you'd like to get a real-time preview of how some of these are going to look, you can simply skim over with your cursor and it is going to show you in your canvas the different types of movements. So you can see here we have several basic movements and then we have labeled cinematic movements. As we scroll down, we have a few custom options, including a camera rig that I can show you, which is really cool. Then we have multiple lens distortions, so sort of a vertigo look in a few of these. We have miscellaneous tools. And then we have simulations, which are kind of funny. So you can see here we have a punch. So if someone got punched, we have Dizzy, you know, after they got punched, whoa, I don't know what's going on. So lots of different options here. Really neat. All right, so why don't we start with our basics? So I'm just going to grab the move horizontal so I can show you. I'm going to drag it into my timeline and you can see that these are working as adjustment layers. So I'm going to just move it over to time it on this clip. And then you'll notice there is a very subtle, very simple move horizontal. In our canvas, we do have two on-screen controls here. So we have the control that is going to set where our camera is going to land that position. And then we have where we are going to start. Now these are locked on X. So if I'm trying to move up and down, nothing's gonna happen. That is to make sure that you are moving completely in a horizontal move. Of course, if you wanted to move both Y and horizontal, you would use your custom movement there. So let's open up our inspector. And again, very simple controls. We have a zoom scale so we can show you how that looks. Let's start with our playhead here. And this is going to be our starting position. And then as we push forward, you can see our ending position there. All right, let's move into our next clip here. So we can see the cinematic options here. So we have blackout, jump, cut, zoom in, blackout, jump, cut, zoom out. We have a chaotic zoom in, uh, just a lot of different options. So why don't we just show you the chaotic zoom in because that's a lot of fun. So as you can see here, it's just kind of like going crazy. Lots of motion blur and stuff is added. We're zooming in and then there's a zoom back out. So again, there is an on-screen control that shows you where you're gonna land for position and scale. So if we wanted to really punch in there a lot, there we go, punch in and come right back out. Over in our inspector, we have our movement target. So if you wanted to fine tune that, we have our zoom scale. And then we have the zoom blur and strength. So as we push back, you can see that the strength is just going to increase or decrease that strength along with your mix. And then the chaotic movement, you can toggle on and off along with the strength of that frequency, etc. So we can make it just absolutely, absolutely chaotic if you wanted. Would be really cool for music videos or something like that. Now, something else that I wanted you to note is you can also use these as transitions. So you see here with our rotation, I'm going to lay this in over top of two clips here. So it is going to start our rotation and then it rotates into our next scene. No on-screen controls for this. It's really simple and straightforward. And then we have rotation type. We have normal, we have constant, we have smooth, and those are gonna give you different looks. And then we have our target rotation value. Typically, you're gonna to want to leave that at 360 degrees, but you are able to change that if you would like, along with your motion blur amount. 
So you can see now that we have a constant rotation and it is just really constant there. I love the default look though, so I'm just going to set that back to normal and it kind of ramps in and then right back out into our next scene. Really nice. All right, why don't we move down and we can show you the custom. So you see we have adjustable timing, zoom in and camera rig. I'm gonna just show you the camera rig really quickly. So you can see here, we do have an on-screen control. This is a single on-screen control and you have a lot of adjustable parameters here. So why don't we just dive right in? We have animations in and out, and then we have our camera X and Y. Of course, that is going to adjust your on-screen control. We have the camera Z position. So think of this as scale, though it really is like a virtual camera. If you were using Apple Motion or something, you'll be really familiar with these tools. Then we have the position X, Y, and Z rate. We have the ease in and out. Then we have rotation here. And what's really neat about this is you can absolutely rotate that footage as if you're in sort of three-dimensional 2.5D space. Then we have our camera angle of view. We have our depth of field amount. So why don't I change that a bit so you can really see the difference that that's making there. If we move our on-screen control, you can then see how that is affecting that footage so you can get really creative if you're wanting to do like some sort of a wild depth of field pan or tilt or zoom or anything like that you can do so we have camera wriggle so that's going to add a bit of a handheld look so you can see that that's kind of moving that footage around and then we have background footage that you can toggle on and you can mess with your background opacities there, different opacities, and then you can see that that footage is just still beneath. So if you wanted to have some sort of footage or something just to fill in that background, you can do so. So now you can watch that, that animates in, there's a little bit of a movement and then animates out. Really neat, you can fine tune camera rig all day, every day. All right, let's continue down. We have lens distortions. So we have a bulge zoom in, bulge zoom out, chromatic aberration zoom in, and then chromatic aberration, lots of zooms. So like I said, you've got all day, every day, you can mess with these. So why don't we pick up our chromatic aberration, multiple zoom ins, and you can see we have multiple on-screen controls here and you can use this as a transition as well if you would like i'm going to bring that back just a little bit so why don't we go ahead and take a look at our on-screen controls so this is going to be our first point here so as i push in boom there's our first and then it's going to zoom over to our second there as you can see so let me move that over and then you can see that that is affecting that second bit of footage so just retiming our clip a little bit underneath and then it just kind of zooms into that next bit. So really awesome, a lot of fun, and then right back out. So I just want you to understand that these movements are definitely useful for static shots, but again, using them as transitions is actually a lot of fun. Let's move down to our miscellaneous. So we have a bounce zoom in here kind of bounces and just toggles right back. We have a bumping zoom. So just kind of boom, boom, boom. Then we've got these drop frame zoom in, zoom out. So let me bring these in and I can show you how these are looking. So it's just kind of a stop motion look. If you wanted to time that up with some music or something like that. Again, on screen control here. We have a drop frame rate, so it just shows you how often or how many frames you're wanting to drop down to. Then we have the zoom in target that's going to toggle your on-screen control. Zoom in scale, so it shows you how much. And then we have a defocus mode here that we can turn on or off. So we've got a blur and a sharpen. And then defocus strength. So let's see how that looks.
All right, let's move down. And the last couple, we've got Dizzy, Punch. We've got Quake Zoom, Shake Zoom. We've got this crazy shot. And then we have a Sway Zoom here. Tremble. Walking. And walking. So that's walking in and that's walking out. So let me show you this walking shot here so you can see it's kind of like we're just walking toward that person there and if you wanted to bring that all the way down that is obviously going to slow down that bit of walking we have our on-screen controls here and what i wanted to show you with this one was if we move back we can actually keyframe this target if we would like. So it's almost like we're walking with the person here in our shot. So over in our inspector, again, we've got just our zoom in target, scale, the ease, walking speed, strength, defocus mode, etc. So that's just going to make your strength of your walking uh, you know, more or less drastic. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a keyframe here on our target. And we have a keyframe set there. And then I'm going to just move my target over. So she has kind of walked out of the frame there, but you can see that it's just following her. So we're just kind of moving with her, moving across. And that keeps her in that frame there until she does pass through the frame entirely. So keyframing these as well gives you a lot of flexibility with the motions that you're gonna be getting in these pre-built presets. And I wanted to show you how you can stack these so they can work together as well. So you're not obviously limited to using one at a time. So why don't we show you how to do that? So we can do, you see we've got this rotation zoom in. So I'm going to bring this in. Again, we've got on-screen controls there. So you see how that's just kind of pushing in. I'm gonna use my on-screen control to move that over to her. I'm gonna bring it all the way down. So it's kind of zooming in there, really nice. And that's a really clean kind of movement. But then let's say I want to have a little bit more going on so we can grab any of these other titles. So why don't we grab our handheld camera and we can bring that in on top there are no on-screen controls for handheld, but we have our movement frequency, our zoom scale, position, etc. But watch how this looks. So it's kind of a little bit more of a jumpy kind of handheld look with our rotation. So they are working together. Really cool. A little bit of movement. And there you go. Once again, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Thank you for checking out this tutorial on M Movements. M Movements is now available. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.